Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, again, my name is Devin Sherry. We're going to work on uh, the customizable crouching uh, that I just put a blueprint example out for. Uh, so just to show you what it's like and what we're going to describe here. All it is, uh, we have the first person blueprint example. Uh, if you hold down left control, you crouch down. You let go, you crouch back up. But also, if you have obstacles in your way, say you have to crouch underneath this, you hold down left control, and then you can move underneath it, obviously, but if you let go of crouch, of uh, left control, you still stay crouched. It does checks, as you can see here, it does line traces to see if there's anything above you. And then, I, st I don't have control the left control down right now, but if I just walk out, it'll automatically pop me back up. Uh, but you can also just hold down crouch and then let go of yourself. Uh, so that's what I have going here, um, and just a brief overview of what it looks like. It's pretty simple here. You got left control and then a flip flop, uh, some measurements for the trace, uh, some animations, a couple of variable changes, and then uh, capsule height changes, things like that. Uh, so we'll do this from scratch, obviously. So let's just take that all away. Uh, so the first thing we're going to start with, if we right click, we'll do a left control, or you can do whatever you want. But that's obviously what I want to do. Uh, to be honest, I'm not too sure if the flip flop uh, node is very necessary, but I used it anyway. So we'll put that in just for consistency's sake. So we'll do a flip-flop and put both press and release into the flip-flop. And we'll first start with when we press uh, left control. That's when we actually crouch down. Uh, so the first thing it starts with is a timeline. So if you just right click and scroll all the way to the bottom, we have an add timeline. And we'll call this crouch animation. Now the crouch animations can be really, really easy. Uh, we're going to add a new float track up here. Uh, we'll name this crouch it's only going to be, we'll do 0.5 seconds, um, maybe even, actually I did 0.3, that seemed like the best. If you want it to be quick, if you want it to be longer, um, you can change that accordingly. Now if we hold down uh, shift and left click twice, we'll create two points on the time on the timeline. Uh, first one is going to be at 0, 0, easy enough. Second one is going to be at 0 0.3 end time, and then value of 1. And then we can hit the zoom to fit horizontal and zoom to fit vertical to get them both in our, our track. And then we control left click so I have them both highlighted here. And we'll just right click and do an auto just so it does a smoother curve. And that's it. So all this animation really does is it goes from 0 to 1 in about 0.3 seconds. Uh, so now we have to basically tell it what 0 is and what 1 is. Uh, so before we do that, we'll just put the A into play. And we'll do what we need to do uh, when the actual uh, animation is finished. When this is finished, obviously, you want your uh, crouch walk to be slower than your normal walk. And what that is is the max walk speed. And in order to reference that, uh, we need to get our inherited variables here real quick. Go to character, and we'll do character movement. And it's called the max walk speed, so we'll do a set max walk speed. Uh, by default, it's at 600, just so you know. Uh, so we're going to make our crouch, uh, we'll make it 200. And we'll plug that into the finished. So as soon as the animation's finished, we're going to start walking really slow. And now we'll work on the actual uh, animation. So this crouch animation is going to basically move us from full height to half height. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, first we need to get a LERP, or linear interpolation, just for a float. And we'll plug the crouch float track into our alpha. So now we just need to tell it what 0 is and what 1 is. Uh, so 0 is going to be our default height. So to do that, we can just grab our capsule component, pull from that a get capsule uh, half height, and then plug it into A. Uh, but what we're going to do instead, something I prefer, I want to make it its own variable. So we should have uh, a begin play somewhere here. If not, we'll look for it. We're going to begin play. Here it is. We'll grab this, and we'll grab out of it, and it's going to have a promote to variable at the top. And we'll call this uh, character full height, and we'll just make that right away. And why we're, the reason why we're doing it at, at event begin play is at the very start, uh, the player's capsule half height is 96. That's never going to change. Uh, so if setting it here, this character full height will always be at a value of 96. So it'll make things nice and cleaner for us. I'll move this down just a tidbit over here. Doesn't need to be full in the way. Uh, so now we have that as a variable. Let's do character full height. 
And then obviously the half height of that uh, 96 is 48. So what I did here is I made a variable called crouch height and made it 48. So we're going to drag that out and plug that into B. So let's compile that and save. And now all we should be able to do is crouch down when we hit control. And we're not Oh, and that's because we haven't finished it yet. I'm stupid. Uh, so we have the lurk going, but now what we need to do is actually set everything here. So let's grab the... Uh, we need the capsule component. And what we're going to do is set capsule half height. And we're going to plug the return value of this linear interpretation to half height. And then plug that into update. And I like things neat, so I'm just going to get this straight. Now, if we play, <laughs> we're going to crouch. Now that we actually have it reading some values here. And there we go. But if I let go of control, you know, we stay crouched. That's not really what we want. And uh, the reason uh, why we also do uh, just the play and not play from start, I believe if we do play from start, uh, it will just keep crouching us and crouching us every time we hit control. Like that. And that's not really what I want. Uh, so we're going to put that back into play. And now for the B, that's where we need to do some strange things. It's not too much strange things, but we got to do a line trace just to see if there's anything above the player while they're crouching. So it's going to take a little bit of math and, over, um, and uh, some arithmetic here to do that. Uh, but the main no node we'll need is the line trace by channel. If it'll type it in there. Here we go. Now the start. It's just going to be the world location of the camera. Uh, so by default, we have a first-person camera here. And what we'll do is get world location. And plug that into start. So the trace is going to start right where the camera is. Now we want the trace to end about 65, maybe 70 units above uh, the player, uh, just to see if there's anything there. And in order to do that, first we need to grab the first person camera again. We'll need that variable. And we'll need to get the world rotation. And the reason why is because we want to then get from that the up vector. So we want to see the rotation of the camera and then get up from that. And then return value, uh, that's where we're going to multiply this by a float. Uh, the number that works best for me will do 70. And then last but not least, we just got to add this vector with the world location. Oops. We got to do a vector plus vector. So we'll do that one and then this one. And then the result is the end. So basically, we're getting the world location, we're getting the up vector, we're going to multiply that by 70, get 70 units up. And then from that, we're going to add the world location so that it measures that distance. Now from here we'll plug that into B. Um, in the line trace by channel, you don't really need to make any changes, but if you want to do a draw D block type, you could do persistent, uh, just so you can see the line traces. Uh, if you're curious on how that works, otherwise you don't really need to do anything else with that node. So let's drag that down just a little bit. Uh, now we got to pull this return value, we'll do branch. So this is basically going to tell us uh, whether or not we're hitting something. So hey, did we have a collision? Did something trace? If so, we're going to do a delay. We're going to leave it at about 0.2 seconds, and we're going to plug it right back in uh, to the line trace by channel. So if there is a collision, we're going to keep checking at that point if there's a collision. And when there's not, that's when we're going to do an uncrouch animation and set all our variables back to what they were for when we're walking. So uh, for the false, let's just go ahead and copy and paste this crouch animation. Uh, but by default, it doesn't give us a timeline name, so we'll do an uncrouch animation just because we're creative like that. Plug the false into play. Now for when this is finished, that's when we want to set our max walk speed back uh, to 600. That's its default. Oops. So finished goes into that. And we can also just copy pasta uh, these guys up here uh, where we do the linear interpolation and set the capsule half height. Uh, but instead, it's going to be the opposite here. Let's first put in the crouch into our alpha. And then uh, we're going to go from the crouch height is A, and then the character full height will be B. The only real difference here. 
then plug in update to the set capsule half height. Let's move things around a little bit. And there we go. Move these variables down. Whoops. I'm very, very picky on how things are organized. I don't like it, but that's how I roll. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are the same. Uh, but that should be it. We should be done at this point. Uh, so let's go ahead and compile. And we'll save. Let's play. And now we can just crouch and uncrouch. And then if we uh, have to get past this, we can crouch, drop down, and I'm letting go of control. And now it's letting me do my own thing. It's not letting me pop up though. Oh, it popped me up here. Yeah, some of these line traces don't work 100%, which which sucks. Uh, the issue may be the delay. Uh, so what we can do is just try to do 0 0.01. Let's make them quick. See if that fixes our issue. There we go. Uh, that fixed it kind of. <laughs> but it gives you the idea here. So if anything, uh, what else we can change as well uh, is this value. Instead of it being 70, we can just do 48 because you know that'll be our height. So you can play around with these values. It's really it's really simple. So I'm saying it's pretty smooth for the most part. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, so overall, that's how it works. Uh, something else we could try to. Let's try making the delay one full second. I'm just curious. Uh, I haven't really played with these values, so this is a good time to do it. Um, let's see. No crouching. That works. Yeah, one second seems the best value. Go. Okay. And so basically, like I said, that's it. Uh, so we're able to make the crouch. We're able to uh, have it check for anything above you. We have those values set up. So uh, let me know what you think. But I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, so again. Uh, check out the blueprint example if you like, but hopefully you learned a lot with this tutorial, so I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial video. If you did, definitely hit like on the video. If you haven't subscribed yet to the Devon Level Design channel, either click on me or the subscribe button above. Uh, also, some social media below me for my Instagram. Uh, you can see my Facebook, you can see me on Twitter, you can do all that good stuff. On my right is some more videos for tutorials and blueprint examples that you can check out with Unreal Engine 4. Uh, so leave a comment if you enjoyed the content in here. Let me know if you learned anything, if there's any issues as well. Um, and also share the video. Let's get the content out there. Let's share with the community. So um, it's always a good thing to do that. So instead, um, let's go ahead and call this the end of the video, I guess. <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time. Bye.